My name's Amata and welcome to this look at Assassin's Creed Origins and I am playing this on the Xbox One X. So I'm going to show you the options menu simply because it does have some stuff, obviously HDR is grayed out because unfortunately my uh, TV does not support HDR but you've got a pretty good amount of gameplay options, your usual array of sound stuff language of course, I'm going to turn subtitles on for your guys' benefit uh, subtitle background yes please and obviously you can look at your controls and look at the sensitivity of all this stuff as well as turn vibration on or off so you know a decent amount of customizability no like options for like higher frame rate mode because on Rise of the Tomb Raider you can do that so it is just like hey enjoy the upgraded version on the X and that's it but I've not encountered any real reason to change it, so, you know. Anyway, let's uh, get back into my game, shall we? So, I have played a few hours of this game and I'm actually in one of the second areas in the game. You start off in Siwa um, after a brief sort of intro sequence and you are then obviously sort of free to explore. As you can see the map is ridiculously huge. I'm just trying to see where I came from, I think it's, yeah. So, ultimately at the moment our goal is to head up to Alexandria, but we want to level up a little bit first before we get there, because this game does have level up mechanics, and I will show you some of that when we actually get some ability points. Now, I'm going to try and keep the story spoilers to a minimum, um, so if there's any cutscenes that have big spoilers, I will put up a warning beforehand. Um, but I won't cut them out simply so you guys can see the game. As you can see, the game is stunning. Absolutely stunning. I love the environment. I mean, just look at this. Just look at it. It looks awesome. It's like it's not even just the fact that I love like Egyptian mythology and like the look of the like the paintings and stuff here. It's just the fact that the game in itself is gorgeous. I mean, even just like looking at this water here. That is that is that is some nice looking water. Like I'm not going to complain about that at all. Now Assassin's Creed has always looked nice, but this is definitely one of the best looking Assassin's Creed games, at least in my personal opinion. I mean, even this sort of rather dirty looking water looks quite nice. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's head towards this marker. And if there's anything super spoilery, of course we'll put up a warning. I don't want to cut the cutscenes out. Because I feel like if you guys want to see them, they're there. And if you don't, you can skip ahead. And I'll just put up a little uh, warning for you guys. What's going on over here? Mm -hmm. So, we have quite a few changes that I'll go through. But first, let's speak to this fella. Bayek! What good fortune! I thought it would be years before we saw you again. Hail in peace, men ahead. How is your family? The <laughs> children seem to grow larger by the minute. My wife and I have our hands full. And you? Is there any news of... None. I forget myself. There are so many things in your life best not spoken of. Forgive me. I see by your garb that you have been promoted. Ah, yes. The High Priest, in his grace, made me his second. And my rank is not the only thing he has changed. You must see the temple. You will give me a tour? Of course, of course. At the moment of your pleasure. So we can uh, speak to him to start a tour. I just want to see if we have any 
quests that are good for us at the moment. We're level 7. Yeah, because this is the Alexandria quest, but as you can see, we're not high enough for that at the moment. So, it does seem like things are going to go sideways on this particular quest. Let's stick with this one for now, and we can probably see some of the more wonderful environments, and then we can go through some of the changes. After you, um, or is it servant of the goddess? Menahet will do for one as good as family. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt the uh, little cutscene there. But, um, yeah, after we've done this quest, I'm going to go through the myriad of changes, because this is quite a breath of fresh air for the series. by a gang of ruffians, huh? Silent as gifts. Uncle Bayek! Uncle Bayek! Hello, Uncle. Jewels of my life, why have you left your mother's side? Pick me up, Uncle Bayek! Ah, sit down. There's no need to attack a man from behind when I'm numbering in four to one. Huh? You told us to secure every advantage possible over a tender's foe. Yes, yes, yes. And I am very dangerous! <laughs> Hide well, for the wanderer stalks your path. <laughs> That's one thing I do really like so far about this game is other than you know the gameplay and stuff, which I'll go through in a minute. It's like Bayek actually has a ton of personality, and it, it comes through in a really cool way. Kind of like how they did with Ezio, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Chill your beans, then I'm, I'm talking. Um, yeah. Like, Assassin's Creed 4, like, main character had there, had a ton of personality, but, like, the guys from Syndicate weren't brilliant, and Connor, god, the less said about him, the better. But Bayek actually is, like, a quite fun character, even so early on in the game. Right, so this is a pretty big change, is we have our lovely hawk friend here called Senu. And instead of having eagle vision, or I don't know if it's a hawk or an eagle, but regardless, we, uh, instead of having eagle vision, like you did in the games... Or the previous game, should I say? We have Senu here to kind of fly around and spot for us, and he can locate targets, and also he can mark sort of patrolling guards and that sort of thing for us as well, which is actually pretty useful. So, like, say this was like a combat mission, I could be sort of flying around and oh, there's one and marking the positions of guards on the map so that I was actually more aware of them as Bayek. And that is actually really useful and actually brings a bit more strategy into the combat missions of the game. Because, you know, there wasn't really a lot of strategy previously. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you praying with my, uh, my talking there. How do I actually get back there? I think I've gone wrong by going through the middle here. Anyway, yeah, so it actually brings a lot of strat a bit more strategy to the assassination missions because you think, oh, okay, yeah, the guards are patrolling this way, so I should go this way, and oh, I can sneak up behind this guy by going this way, that sort of thing. And you can just keep an eye on their patrols and have a bit more strategy. Oh, gosh. Right. I'm going to show the combat a little bit here. As you can see, we have slightly more traditional shield and sword combat. You can have heavier weapons, but I tend to favour, in most games, a speedier combat style that maybe does less damage, but is obviously f faster and, personally, for me at least, more satisfying. 
but obviously you do have quite a lot of choice in this because one of the other things that's different in this game is there is a lot more choice in gear. Previously you had your weapons that you your assassin weapons and that was your lot. Sina, you must come down from here. This would be a good place to watch the stars. Only the priests are permitted here. You know that. Yes, but I want to see if Hush, come down now. We can watch stars from the riverbank. Yeah, so you actually have a lot more choice in terms of your gameplay style, which I actually quite like because, you know, as good as it was to have the assassin weapons, there was only like, yeah, this is what you get, this is what you stuck with the entire game. Yeah, you got extra equipment that later on you got, but it was just like, that is your equipment and that's it kind of thing. Stay calm. I will help you out of there. Uh, am I supposed to do that? <laughs> can I just sort of, like carry him out? I mean, oh, I can just break through here. There we go. This way. God, never a dull moment in Bayek's life to assassination missions to helping children throwing themselves down wells. It never stops. <laughs> Alright, let's find this last one and then Go we can she will be worried. have a poke through the gear system and also do another mission which will hopefully be a bit more combat orientated. Given the title of this mission, Ambush in the Temple, I thought, ooh, this will be a good one. Yeah, I can uh, show some stuff off, it'll be great. Nope, I'm just, I'm just looking for children. It's not really what I want in my pulse-pounding Assassin's Creed game. Just saying. Or any game ever, really. <laughs> just like, yeah, go go and play hide and seek. I'm just like, what? <laughs> you found me. Your turn to hide. That's the last of the children. Right. Let's speak to our friend and Look hopefully. Fraud abounds in your market, and you claim Ooh, what's you can going do on nothing. Here? The dealings of the market are beyond me. Speak rather to the offending merchant. <laughs> Priest, you have proven as false as your mummies. Man ahead. Your brood is delivered safely home. Thank you, friend. Hey, what did that fool want with you? Some visitors, having purchased religious objects, are angry when our village has no more dead cats to sell them. Though not a merchant, I am often the means by which the aggrieved snap their anger. This matter needs a firm hand. Right, hopefully we have enough to level up from that. If not, I'm sure we'll uh, be fine. Right, let's go do a different mission so we can see a bit more of the game. That wasn't really the best example of the improved mechanics in this game because I have played every Assassin's Creed game apart from the Assassin's Creed Rogue and the Liberation one. Yeah. Those are the only two I haven't played. Apart from that, I've played, I've played all the mainline Assassin's Creed games, you could say. So, one of the things that I've always disliked is the combat has, has always been a bit trash, to be honest with you. And this game has definitely, 100%, made a big improvement on that. So let's have a look through the gear, and as you can see... We've got ranged, melee, and we have a shield, and we have a tool, as well as armor that we can improve and craft, as well as our outfit, and of course our mounts. Now at the moment I have this particular bow, and as you can see, we not only have different bows, but we also have like different rarities, and obviously this a rare bow is better than just like a normal vanilla bow. Uh, sadly I actually sold all my old equipment, so I can't actually show you. Um, but you get the idea, you get like different stats, so you know, you'll pick up new weapons all the time. Not, in, not even just different types of weapons, you'll get different types of sickle swords, which is what I'm using at the moment, different types of bows, different shields, and I'll probably get more tools as I level up and that sort of thing. So, abilities wise, we now have a tier tree. Now this is actually to do with the towers. Now there is still tower climbing in this game. But it doesn't work quite the way that it used to. But as you can see, these are the abilities that I've gotten so far. And we've got three sort of trees to explore. 
So, you kind of pretty much have to get this one, this regeneration one, but why would you not have, why would you not want it? But after that, you're free to pretty much get whatever you like. And probably by the end of the game, you're probably going to have them all. But it does still give you an option to be like, yeah, yeah, I want to play this way, so I'm going to go this and this and this, that sort of thing, and gives you a nice little example of each one. So yeah, a RPG-ish system has improved the game, but the main thing that's improved the game is the combat. It is way, way better. Like, so much better, it's actually crazy. So, let me see if I can, if there's another eagle point around. I've already got that one. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that is, I'll check that out in a second. Alright, there's one over here. I can show you the difference in how the climbing towers works, because obviously in the old games, you would just, you know, you climb a tower, you get your vision, and then there's like a billion markers on the map that you can now follow for like all your quests, and it even tells you what each quest is and that sort of thing. This game does it a little bit differently, so let's... uh take this boat. Quite humble in comparison to that galleon there, but I'm sure we could get one of those later on in the game, at least I hope so, maybe red. <laughs> at least with this I'll have to swim across the <laughs> across the way. Also I love the environment. I mean just like a sterile day at this view, honestly. It just is so gorgeous. Right. Uh, what would be the best place to park this? Here probably would be okay. Uh. Um. <laughs> Why could he not just jump from the boat to the. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit janko. He just doesn't just jump from the boat, he just dives into the water for no reason. I'm just like. Okay then. Well, that hasn't loaded properly. Uh, Ubisoft, you might want to fix this. Thanks. <laughs> All right, let's climb this tower and get a lovely view before we head out. Oh, actually, uh, need to be a bit clever about this. Hmm. Yeah. Boom. There we go. Synchronize. Yeah, so this this will look very familiar. Man, that view. <laughs> I just can't even. Right, let's swim up so we don't drown. Lovely. Yeah, so the difference is, if I can just get back into the boat to show you, is instead of now littering the map with literally billions of icons that show me exactly what each thing is, we now have... Hey, you might want to check this thing out. Obviously, it's way too high level for me now, but... It's, ooh, what's this? It just says, hey, this is a thing that you might want to check out. That's it. And it, that is way more interesting than... <coughs> oh, this is a race mission. This is a assassination mission. This is a blah. So, like, oh, this is a thing that you might want to check out. That is way more interesting and actually encourages you to explore the map. And also it just makes the game feel a bit more organic in how you discover your new quests and that sort of thing. Because it feels just more, well, again, organic. Like... Instead of being like, oh, I'm going to go to this point in the map and I know I'm going to do an assassination mission. It's like, oh, oh I've gone here and oh, I've been pickpocketed and oh, I'm going to chase the thief down and it's going to end to a quest. It, it just makes the world feel a bit less like doing upon your whims kind of thing. and best, A bit less robotic. It feels more alive. And just the amount of detail that's been put into this world kind of helps with that as well. So, I have to say, like, I was quite hopeful for this game because... Everything I heard about it 
had showed me at least that the time away from the series had done the developers good and we had a, a fresher, less tired feeling, rejuvenated Assassin's Creed on our hands because they'd taken the time away to be like, right, we need to rethink the formula, how can we do it? And they haven't re like rethought it with like anything revolutionary, it's not like there's any mechanics here you haven't seen in every game ever, but as Horizon Zero Dawn showed us, you can make use of those well-known mechanics to still make an interesting game if you put them together in the right way and if the, re you know, if the game itself is still interesting despite the fact that you've seen these mechanics a bunch of times. And that is the case, at least so far, for Assassin's Creed Origins. You've got an interesting world, you've got an interesting main character, you've got a world that feels alive. You know, it's the storyline so far is definitely intriguing. Actually, I'm going to call my mount here so we can get there a bit faster. Yes, you ride a camel, because of course... And you just got a world that is just fun to ride out, ride around in because it just well, a looks stunning as I keep saying, and b um, just feels really alive and fun to explore. Who are you? I wonder. No, oh, just your nobody. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And already I've been in a ton of different locations and met different people, and I'm still fairly early into the game. Ah, showed the combat off a little bit now. A bit better. Hey! Yeah, so you saw a little bit of the combat before, but we can now get a much better look at it. I may have wanted to be stealthy here, because there's way more of them than I thought, but... Uh... There we go, beautiful. You have... Instead of the puppet system of previous games, a much more standard but much more interesting to play to just normal combat mechanic. You've got your shields and you have your sword. And as I said earlier, oh, what the fuck? I, I accidentally went into photo mode there. I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to do that at all. What I meant to do was use my adrenaline ability, which you can do once you've got enough. So I can basically go into my adrenaline mode here and hopefully use it before it runs out. That would be nice. There we go. And as you can see, I was doing way more damage there. This guy needs to stop shooting me when I can't see him. That is incredibly unfair. There we go. That was very sloppily done, but hey ho. We survived, and any battle you survive is a battle you win. Uh, ooh, so we have some dual swords. I wonder if that means I wouldn't have a shield with that one. Let's have a look. Ah, weapon bearer skill. So, can I have two scissor blades? Okay. That is a upgrade, but I can't use it yet. I'm slightly off leveling up, which is really annoying. But um, maybe. Look into this. <laughs> okay, I thought this is a venge thing is about. Like, is it is a player that's died here or something? Maybe I don't know. Whatever. Let's see if we can get enough points to level up and then we can have a bit more of a poke around the leveling up system. You kind of get the idea, but you know, it's always better to show it. Oh, is that that I just, I walked over there. Pick up torch. Sure. Oh, hang on. Loot. And loot. Oh, a heavy blade. And what's this? We have a thing. Here is the book of the dead. Becca will be pleased. Yeah, so it is an old fashioned ding when you level up, which is uh That means we'll be now to return the book to the old man. Right, I don't need that torch anymore. 
Yeah, right, so as I was saying, leveling up. So let's see what we want to get. Let's see our options. We've got pull enemy drivers off their mount and take control of it. Okay, that could be useful. Or press Y after melee attacking or dodging to drop this power that stuns nearby enemies and creates a smoke screen, smoke screens, and break line of sight. That is quite useful. Sleep darts, lower rank enemies or animals sleep and sneak without being detected. Okay, useful. Animal gizzing trinkets can be sold at plus twenty five percent price. Automatically loot an assassin target. Killing enemies with a headshot grants you bonus XP. Get shields back that suck in your shield. You can equip a second bow. Eagle harass. While in hover mode, look at an enemy and press Y to have Senu stun them. Senu also help you harass enemies during combat. Ooh, I like that. Damn it! I need two ability points for that. Uh, I might actually save up for that because that sounds pretty good actually. <laughs> so, yeah, overall my impressions of Assassin's Creed Origins are really good. Again, oh, hang on, we need to confirm this kill. What are you on about? I took it for my father. What are you on about? See, I stole from you. I don't even know what this guy, who this guy is. Oh, because I took the Book of the Dead from him, maybe? Okay, you're, you're kind of just bleeding, so I'm just kind of happy to let you do that. Cool. Alright. Do I need to reconfirm that kill? Nope. Yeah, so... This game has not added anything original. It's added mechanics that you've seen in other open world games and also games that you've seen in and other mechanics, excuse me, that you've seen in other Ubisoft games. However, that doesn't mean it hasn't had a positive impact on the series. You know, the combat is more standard rather than that sort of weird puppet mechanic and the weird way that people just sort of like patiently wait to be killed. So like, you know, you can just do like a counter and just instantly murder like 10 people without even trying. The combat at least has some challenge to it now. And there is no counter mechanic. There's parry, but it takes a bit more skill than the old counter mechanics, I find. And also isn't just like an instant lol fuck you button. Um, so the combat is vastly, vastly improved. But given that this is, is a Assassin's Creed game, combat is a pretty significant portion of the game. So the combat being better in itself is a big improvement. And the way the world actually works, the way the map has been changed, the way the towers have been changed, the addition of Senu himself, or herself actually, I think it, I think it's a she, I'm um, pretty sure he says she at some point, and the fact that the world is just a really fun, interesting place to explore, this is one of the best Assassin's Creed's I've played in a long time, and, you know, Syndicate was okay, but it was just kind of, again, it was just okay, it was not brilliant. And that was a real shame, because I've been waiting for a Industrial Revolution England Assassin's Creed for years, and we finally got it, and it was just humdrum Assassin's Creed by numbers. This is at least changed up enough to feel fresh. Has your father left us? His good life is over. He was too weak to live till you return. May he be conducted in peace. He was in despair that his car would not join my mother's. Where is his body? It is not too late. You are a blessing from the gods. He receives the rites in the small temple. So let's finish up this mission and then I think have a bit of a wander around the world so you can guys get a feel. And I think then I'll call the video. I think you guys have seen why everyone has been praising this game. I mean, if you didn't like Assassin's Creed, I don't think this is going to change your mind because it is still an Assassin's Creed game. It has... A lot, you know, it is again so Assassin's Creed. It has the same, you know, a lot of the same sort of mechanics in terms of like how the st story unfolds, and it is very much, sort of, uh, much an Ubisoft open world game. But I feel like it's if you're getting a bit tired of the series, but you enjoyed it, you know, originally this definitely has enough to bring you back to the series. But I just, I don't think it's enough to change your opinion on the series if you didn't like Assassin's Creed because it is still Assassin's Creed, if that makes any sense. Old man, your book. May it guide you to your wife's side. Right. 
So let's uh, let's choose a a route. To uh, go, so I was having to pick up my quest there and see where we can head to. I mean, maybe we, maybe we could go check this out. Why not? Better, what better way to end the video than a lovely trip into the desert where we might die of thirst? <laughs> All right, let's go, go, go. I will say though, like the actual like assassination missions are fewer. At least from what I've seen, but again, that that makes the world feel less about you because it's just, you're just kind of like, yeah, you're on this like revenge mission, but you're also doing all this other stuff and probably learning more and more about the world, and probably like the story is obviously going to change and expand based on your journey, that sort of thing. And the map is stupidly huge, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good because a big map can feel really empty if there's not interesting stuff to fill it with, and I just haven't felt that it's been empty yet. It's it's just full of interesting stuff to explore because the locations are so interesting and because of the more organic way quests are discovered. It just feels more alive than Assassin's Creed has in a long time. Ah, okay. This is a part of a longer quest that we have. That I don't want to say why we're doing it, because it's a bit of a spoiler, but uh, I will just quickly do it, because it's a nice little thing to end the video. Right, so we have to line up these stars. Papa, how do you know if you're in love? Why, Henry? Do you think you are in love? Hmm. I don't know. Love should feel good. You and Mama are the only ones I love. But this hurts. Sometimes I can't even think straight. <laughs> that sounds like love. It could be. I was once like that. Hmm. I'm very sorry, son. How am I supposed to do this then? I'm not really... The scorpion goddess, Serken. She protected Iset and Horus from jealous Set. She still protects against poisonous animals. But not love. And against that, there is no protection. Not even the gods can. Okay, this looks more like it. Okay. I, was just, I wasn't seeing it at all. I was like, ah, oh, okay, this might be why. Right, so, if perhaps you were wondering if Assassin's Creed Origins is the game to reinvigorate the series, the answer is yes. Will this get you back into the series if you never liked Assassin's Creed? No. But I don't think you really expected that, to be honest with you. So, overall, I would definitely recommend this game if you are looking to get back into the series. It has done exactly what I hoped it would do. Breathed some much-needed life into... What was becoming a very tired series indeed. And my hope is that they learn from this, that being Ubisoft of course, and don't make it yearly like they did because that was part of the problem. Every two, three years, that's fine. I would rather have it less frequent and feel fresher each time because it being yearly was definitely an issue, to be honest. That's definitely part of the reason why it felt a bit stale. Not only because you played it this so often, but obviously because the developers were just given no time to actually breathe and think on these things. So, I think we shouldn't see it become yearly again, to be honest. So, as I, as I murder these vultures horribly... Let us... 
Oi. Right, got one. Alright, let's get out of here. <laughs> so I can actually call the video without being attacked by vultures. That would be lovely. Alright. There you have it, guys. A look at Assassin's Creed Origins on the Xbox One X in terms of the Xbox One X version. Because I realised I haven't actually mentioned that at all. I think it looks absolutely stunning and it plays absolutely fine, to be honest with you. I've noticed no issues with the version that would be attributed to it being a console version. So, if you have an X and you're thinking, is the game worth it in terms of the about improvements? I would say, yeah. Does it have any frame rate, frame rate problems? Not that I've noticed. Not that we've seen with like Unity on console, Jesus, no. And it looks stunning. So yeah, there you have it. A game that is not only good in itself, but a fine testament to the X's improvements over the PS4 Pro and of course the vanilla Xbox One versions. So with all that said, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.